I opened, originally opened the Schooner Seafood Restaurant uh, back in 1983, December of 83. And the reason why I named it Old Bluxy Schooner, uh, years ago, that's how they caught shrimp. You know, they didn't have motors and shrimp boats. They had big sails and they'd drop these gigantic seine nets and they'd circle them, you know, circle the nets, sort of like a purse seine and they'd pull it closed and two or three guys would pull the seine, the, the big net in and that's how they caught shrimp and crabs and fish. I was down on the point, like I said, uh, perfectly happy uh, there for about 23 years or, or so and Katrina wiped that building out. But about six months before Katrina, I happened upon this building by accident. I was uh, running errands for the restaurant, coming back from the grocery store, and I actually ran out of gas. And while Joe was waiting for someone to bring him gas, he noticed that the building was for sale, and so he bought it. And as luck would have it, it was left standing while his original restaurant was destroyed by Katrina. So Joe decided to move the restaurant to the new building which was right across the street from a Catholic church that was built in the 1800s, a church with a beautiful statue of Mother Mary in the courtyard. And as it turns out, the building Joe bought had quite an interesting past. It was built over on the site of an old funeral home. So kind of the, the thing started with uh, someone watching me. Might not have been Mother Mary, might have been someone in here watching me, you know. Katrina in all her might and fury, had slung the Grand Casino barge across the highway and into a parking lot. Joe saw an opportunity to rescue some of the fixtures from the casino and turn them into part of the decor of the restaurant. The lights, the marble counter, even the ceiling came from the casino. But restoring the building only seemed to stir up more than just dust and dirt. Because, uh, you know, as I was restoring the building, different things would happen. Like, here's one instance. I was uh, installing the ceiling, you know, replacing it and refurbishing it. And I was working really late one night. It was like midnight, and I was by myself. And uh, I was trying to finish this, the ceiling that night because the painters was coming in the next morning to paint. And I heard uh, someone whispering, or whispering. And so I kind of stopped, and, uh, and I kind of listened, and I heard them whispering, saying, What's he doing? And I heard it three times in a row, what's he doing? And the third time they said, what's he doing? Then another voice said, I don't know. So about that time, I was down off the scaffold and I didn't get my ceiling painted the next day, believe me. And Joe wasn't the only one to witness the weird occurrences at the restaurant. And then in the morning, some of the waitresses, when they come in early, you know, Jocko in the kitchen, he'd, sometimes he just gave up. He just thought he had voices going on in his head, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, the waitresses would come out here, and one waitress said she would see somebody sitting at, like, booth six, and she'd fix the coffee and all that, and she'd bring it to the table, and nobody was there. She said it happened a bunch. I was doing something by the register, count money or something, and they, uh, I heard something. And um, I went over to see what it was, because it sounded like something fell, and there was crackers on the floor. And I said, oh, no, no, I'll get it. They were picking up crackers. And the guy said, we didn't do it. He said, the crackers were on the other side of the table, and they flew across the table and hit the floor, and their eyes were, like, huge. One guy says, you know, that the pots just will start swinging or, you know, but... Uh, my friend that worked here with me, um, I come in one morning and she was really, um, she was really, I mean, she was pale. She said, you uh, wouldn't believe what happened. She said, I heard something and I looked up and from the other room, walking into this room, there was an, a lady and she was in a long gown and it was just the image of her. And uh, it was an old timey dress. And um, she said she just walked across the front and walked back and I was like, you know, it scared me to death. So I mean, things like that would happen. I guess it goes back to, you know, I, I discussed with you about some of the different businesses that have been in here and they said it had been a, a mortuary in a funeral home. But who knows? Maybe the spirits and spooks just heard there was a good place to eat. After all, that's what's been drawing the living to the restaurant for three decades. And I've been coming here probably since Joe opened the store down on the point for Hurricane Katrina. About probably 25 years, 26 years I've been with Joe. Uh, fresh seafood, you know, the gumbo's out of, out of this world. 
His mom has been making that kind of secret recipe. She's been doing it for, like I said, probably since she was born back in the days, you know. But was, as kids growing up on a point down here, uh, we've always you know, known her as a schooner. Uh, we probably eat it twice a week. So our regular menu, you know, we mainly specialize in our gumbo. Our seafood gumbo is great. Um, our po' boys in general are, are one of our best sellers on the menu. Crab meat and cheese is probably the best seller. The crab meat and cheese and the seafood gumbo pretty much put us on Can't the map. Go wrong with I think because nobody nobody has it. It's such an odd such an odd po' boy. People come in and they'll ask you because they've never been here. Uh, so what do you recommend? The crab meat and cheese. They look at you kind of funny what from is, the get go. Yeah. Crab and cheese that don't look at them. Look, if you don't like it, yeah, you got to pay for it. And I'll tell a lot of them that I can't go wrong, you know. So they get the crab meat and cheese and it comes out. And by the time you get back to ask them how it was, it's, it's gone. I mean, they're, they're making cheese off their finger, and you're kind of like, you like, man, I, I never would have thought of it. So when you find yourself haunted by hunger pains, needing to scare up something to eat, the old Biloxi schooner off Howard Avenue has a booth waiting for you. And if you catch something out of the corner of your eye, well, it may be your server bringing you a plate of fresh seafood, or it may be a shadow, or just the light playing tricks on you. Light has a way of doing that here.